went right up that. Little wheel spin on the one. That was straight up ice. You got a little wheel spin out of one wheel. That was it. I would. I, I'm slipping more there than the truck is. So the Ford Maverick. It's a truck. And it came out. I, I thought, you know, what's old is new again. This is going to be a a new version of the pickup trucks. The small pickups. The actually small pickups, not mid-sized trucks, but the small pickups of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. A friend of mine, Rick, picked one up. Went for a ride. And it's, it's just not like that at all. Stay tuned. So the Maverick XLT comes with a 2.5 liter, eight speed automatic transmission, all-wheel drive system. The one impression, the one thing that really stuck out with the truck is how roomy it is inside. I'm not sure if this is something that Ford did with the panels, the shape of them, the way they look. You don't feel like you're in a compact truck. You feel like you're in a much bigger vehicle. So in other words, if someone had blindfolded you and put you inside that vehicle, you would know that you were in the smallest pickup available from Ford Motor Company. Internal storage was a big concern for Ford. Their storage cubbies and, and places to put things everywhere. Big glove box, big door panels, cup holders, places to store your phone in three different styles. There's compartments within compartments. There's compartments in the bed. The rear seat flips up to make a very usable compartment. The truck I'm in, Rick's truck, he had a Dodge 1500. Everything that was stored in that 1500, he pulled out of and stuffed under that rear seat and had room to spare. The ride on the Maverick is very car-like. It has independent rear suspension, independent front suspension as well, but you don't get jarred. There's no bouncing around like you'd have with a standard leaf spring and a solid axle. It goes over small bumps in the road, potholes, things like that with ease. It's, it's not a jarring ride at all. It's not a traditional pickup style ride, and certainly not a traditional small pickup style ride. Now, the engine Rick selected for his XLT was the 2.0 liter turbo. That's 250 horsepower, 277 foot-pounds of torque. That powertrain seemed to work well with the 8-speed automatic. Zero to 60 times, and are roughly in the 7 second range, 6.9. Some magazines have tested. Fuel economy rated by the EPA is 22 city, 29 highway. That's with the all-wheel drive. The Maverick's dash layout was nice. The LCD was user-friendly, included Apple CarPlay and whatever that thing Android does. The heater controls, which I prefer traditional heater controls with dials, seems to be a lot easier than going through an infotainment system. The one thing I really didn't like was the electronics gear selector, although I was glad to see it's nowhere near the volume controls or heater selections, unlike a Dodge. The Maverick was equipped with forged drive modes. They included normal, tow haul, Slippery, Eco, and Sport. The Maverick's bed, while it's only a four-foot bed, it's not exactly gigantic. It is capable. You can carry up to 1,500 pounds in the back of there. There's slots set up for 2 by 4 so you can set up partitions. There's tie-downs. It's a workable bed. The really nice thing was the plastic cladding that went around the lip of the bed as well as down the side. So that would help with dent control, stop you from denting things or banging things into it. Now, Rick and I decided to try this truck in a snow and ice environment. We had a drive there, and while Rick had only driven this truck 100 miles, I want to get his impressions of his new Maverick, see what he thought. So 1,500 ride-wise compared to what you're in now. Just drive it along. Uh, How do you think it, this one would compare to the 1,500? Uh, actually, the ride on this thing is, feels, as far as smoothness, it's about the same. Really? Okay. Uh, yeah, because that 1500 rode really smooth. It was pretty but nice. They had a pretty big wheelbase, you know, because that was a crew cab, too. Right. Yeah. You're not, there's not a whole lot of lag there. There's no mushiness. Uh, it's just, when you turn, it's turning. Yeah, it, it feels like a little sport truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And sticker on this one was what, 28? 20, yep, 28. So 28,000, you get a pretty well dressed up pickup truck. Yeah. 
with the it's a great little truck i think for 20. <laughs> <laughs> it is too so at this point we know the mannerisms of the maverick on pavement it drove well it's comfortable it handles bumps well the steering input seems to be good the four-wheel disc brakes stop it well the thing we didn't know was how does Ford's intelligent all-wheel drive work? Now, Ford says it's an advanced drivetrain system that's able to monitor hundreds of different pieces of data every second to help improve handling and traction. And some of those things were rate of acceleration, wheel spin, wheel steering angle, accelerator position. And all this information is, is then verified by Ford's onboard computer to let it know how to send power, how to send torque to each wheel independently. And that sounds great. But how does that work in the real world? So we took the Maverick out to a park that had been snowed on the week prior and snowed on two days after that. So you had compacted snow. It had been driven over, so there's now ice there. It was a 40-degree day, so some of that ice had melted, so there's actually water laying on the ice. And that's a condition that really no one wants to be in. But it was a controlled environment for us. Let's see how the Maverick's intelligent all-wheel drive system actually reacts in the real world. So you can see this thing just drove over ice like it was not a problem. The torque sensing in, the, in each wheel seemed to work very, very well. If one wheel started to slip, and I noticed no wheel slip throughout this driving session, the other ones would kick in. That's theoretically how it worked. There's a clutch between the front axle and the rear axle, and if the front starts to give way, the rear picks up the slack. I didn't notice any spin. The Maverick just handled it like it was not a big deal. Now, keep in mind, these were on the all-season Continental radials. Not really ideal for snow. And I'm not saying that the Maverick is a off-road vehicle. It isn't. Most people, I don't think, intend to take it over challenging trails. But for what you're going to run into in daily driving, it's more than competent. So I have to think that Ford hit a home run with this one. You have a lot of truck there for not a lot of money. It's nice to see that segment returned to the market. It was a segment that was a large portion of sales in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. I'm not sure why it ever went away. Maybe it's profit, not sure. But if you're in the market for a small truck... I can't speak to the hybrid version. I haven't seen one. I haven't tested it. It comes in front wheel drive only. That's not going to work for folks, most folks in Pennsylvania anyway. Get a lot of snow up here over the winters and, and the all wheel drive just seems to be a, a much better fit. But for those down south where you don't get a lot of snow, maybe check it out. Oh, like and subscribe if you get a chance. That'd be awesome. So Rick's a guy that doesn't show a lot of emotion. He's pretty laid back. I want to leave you with this look on his face. And I think what you see there is a satisfied customer. It's somebody for the first time that's realizing the vehicle they purchased was a wise decision. It was nice to see. Till next time, we'll see you.